MSU basketball beats Grand Valley State in its only exhibition of the season. Michigan State football suspends four more players. Peyton Thorne and Xavier Henderson also speak with the media. And then to round out the show, listener questions. Let's go. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's my favorite people of all time. You already know who you are. That's right. The viewers and listeners of Locked on Spartans, thank you so much for kicking off your day. Or, hey, you know, if this is uh, your little nightcap, spending your night with us here on the Locked on Spartans podcast. Yeah, we do this five days a week during football season, during basketball season, during neither of those sports. Uh, we're, We're always chatting about your Spartans here, and we're talking about the Spartans that just downed the Lakers of Grand Valley State at home. That's right. That'll show them. Smooth sailing game. Nothing to sweat about. Nope, certainly weren't down five points at halftime or anything like that. But, uh, oh, wait, no, they actually 100% were down five at halftime. Um, Look, we're not going to get riled up over that. Um, We're not going to be punching drywall, kicking things across the room. uh, Because, look, it's an exhibition game. And uh, we're on the board. Michigan State is back. We got one unofficial game under our belt, and it's just nice to have Sparty Hoops back in our lives. Izzo got a technical in this exhibition game. Uh, someone on Twitter went in MSU basketball's mentions and said that Tom Izzo should be fired before the first half of an exhibition was even over. I don't care if that guy was joking or not. Still, that it's just nice to have Michigan State basketball back in our lives. The official season opener, of course, next Monday against Northern Arizona, but... For this night, hey, it was great to see the Spartans versus the Lakers. And like we said, it wasn't always smooth sailing. You know, down five points at halftime. But eventually, 73-56, Michigan State gets the win. All five Michigan State starters in double figures. Malik Hall leading the way with 15 points, three of five from three. But otherwise, honestly, from him, kind of a quiet game. That's the quietest 15 points I think we'll see all year. And, well, that's not to say that he had a, a dog bleep game. It's just, hey, Malik Hall's a good player. We expect a lot from him, and he had a little bit of a turnover issue, which we'll get to in a little bit. But, look, there's nothing too shocking about the starting lineup, which is always a storyline going into the season. Tonight it was A.J. Hogard, Tyson Walker, Malik Hall, Joey Hauser, and Mighty Sissoko. I suspect that when Jaden Akins is back, you can you know take it a few ways, like Hogard, Walker, Akins at the three, Hall at the four and Hauser at the five if you want to go small ball or have Hauser come off the bench, slide Hall down to the four. Sissoko's your starting center. There's going to be some options here when Jaden Akins does come back, which uh, hey, we're also going to get to Mr. Akins here at the end of this segment. But let's just you know finish talking about the game and the guys that did play for Michigan State tonight. First half takeaways. I Look, I'm out of Michigan State. How on earth did Michigan State get themselves in a five point hole against Grand Valley State. How did they get us having PTSD of what happened against those Lakers in 2007? Well, it's uh, yeah, turnovers, you know, like, ooh, really changed it up from last year. Uh, actually, on the whole night, Michigan State had 14 turnovers. Not like a back-breaking number, but still you hope to do a little better against a team like Grand Valley State. Uh, and nine of those 14 turnovers, actually, from A.J. Hogard and Malik Hall. Now, again, that's not to say that either had a horrible game, just like we said. You know, Malik Hall led the team in scoring 15 points, and we'll get to AJ Hogard in a little bit here, but also the rebounding margin wasn't in the favor of Michigan State early on in this one. That's how that's how else they get into a five-point hole. Now, Michigan State did end up winning the rebounding margin 39 to 37. That's 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 a little close, though. That's a little close, though, against a Grand Valley State team who Really has a small lineup. Um, I think there are two guys that are six foot nine or taller played a combined like I think 16 minutes tonight or something like that. So yeah, look, Michigan State's uh, gonna have those issues all season, I think. Not necessarily the longest team, especially if Mighty Sissoko can't stay on the court, which he had no it he had no problem doing tonight, but in those games where he really can't, then okay, hmm, where are we gonna get these rebounds from? But again, hey. 
Michigan State down five against Grand Valley State. And no, I, again, we're not going to freak out because just last week they were neck and neck with Tennessee going into their first half. So no, this is all scrimmage, all exhibition. I, it, look, maybe maybe I'm not getting riled up about it because one of two things I've I'm just I've grown up. I'm more mature. Or number two, the the football team has just beaten all the emotion out of me that I have left for this year. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a cocktail of both. But, yes, Michigan State did pull away at the end, took care of business in the second half. And uh, there are some takeaways that we could have. Nothing, nothing, you know, grand sweeping announcements that we have some proclamations about the season. But, no, like, we'll start with the big men right here because that was a group of players that we really were interested in seeing on Tuesday night. And uh, look, just like we said, maybe the rebounding will be a concern all season long. But individually, my Sissoko, 4 for 4, 11 points, 6 rebounds. Had a nice little turnaround jumper over his right shoulder too. So that was, that was a little saucy, can't lie. Um, speaking of saucy, Jackson Kohler, true freshman. We've heard all about how budding of a star this kid is going to be on offense and we saw it he had a nice little fadeaway jumper had a nice little baseline drive he even had a block and a steal so eat your heart out everyone that is concerned about his defense but just played 13 minutes tonight which probably seemed about right it might get higher as the season goes along as he gets more acclimated to the college game and then uh the third big man the other freshman big man as well Carson Cooper six minutes this kid is just going to be a bonafide space eater, maybe a minutes eater if Michigan State gets in a hairy situation. So, yeah, the big men were fine. Again, against Grand Valley State, not a team that has physically imposing big men on their side, but, yeah, the big men looked decent, solid. Solid is where we will end that conversation. Tyson Walker had my favorite stat of the night. That's right, takeaway number two. First one was the big men. Tyson Walker is the second takeaway because he had my favorite stat of six attempted threes on the night. He only made two of them, two of six from three. You know, nothing sterling, but man, seeing him shoot six threes, that makes me that makes me very happy. That makes me thrilled because this man is a 44% career three-point shooter. 44% career three-point shooter, let me say that again but only averaged 2.1 attempts per game last year. Tyson, my my, my, my friend Tyson, we're going to need to shoot the rock uh, to start this season, especially with Aikens not playing, especially with the absence of Max Christie, who I know didn't end up putting a sterling three-point percentage. But hey, regardless, someone's going to have to be a three-point threat. You do have good shooters on this team. Lee Call can shoot the three. Joey Hauser can shoot the three. But, ooh, Tyson Walker, we're going to need you to shoot six times. Good to see him aggressive behind the perimeter. And A.J. Hogard is another takeaway we have. And, yes, hey, look, he had a turnover bout tonight, if you will. But uh, this is his team. This is his team. This might be the, the most grand statement I'm going to make. And it's not a surprising one because he was the leader of last year's team. And you kind of saw it tonight. Uh, 14 points, five rebounds, five assists, four steals, two blocks, two made threes. And really, like, I, look, I don't want to say he uh, came to the rescue for Michigan State because, again, like, you don't necessarily have to come to the rescue against a, a Gleak opponent. No disrespect to Grand Valley State, but th this game never felt like it was in serious danger. But wh whenever there is a little twinge of panic, I guess, it seemed like A.J. Hogard was always there to answer the bell, whether it be with a pass a steel defensive play. So there you have it. again, perfect game. No, no, he, he was a, a big reason for the 14 turnovers, but Hey, um, you like everything else that you saw from AJ to start the season. Two other quick things. Uh, <laughs> 13 to 21 from the free throw line. I'm sure Tom Izzo will be uh, just thrilled about that one. And Trayvon Holloman, the other freshman we have not talked about, no, not a great box score by any means, but if you watch that game, and again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, Gliak opponent, but man, this kid is a dog on perimeter defense. That will get him some early playing time, I think. No, nothing crazy like 25 minutes a game, but in spots, there is a role on this team for Trayvon Holloman. Really quick before we get to some football, uh, yes, Izzo did speak about Jaden Akins, the presumed starter, once he comes back from his stress fracture injury. 
And uh, this tweet comes from Chris Solari of the Free Press. Izzo says Jaden Akins will work out tomorrow and might try to practice later this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Doesn't know if he'll play in the first or second game yet until Aiken practices full go. Izzo went on to say, quote, he's one of my best two-way players since Gary Harris. We need him back. Yeah, you probably do. Yes, yeah, that's probably a safe sentence to say, Mr. Izzo. But uh, yeah, interesting to hear him get a little more concrete with the timeline because we talked about it yesterday that Aikens is going to come back hopefully sometime early this season is what the report was coming from John Rothstein. But now, okay, we're wondering about the first or second game, just has to practice full go. I'm going to share the same concern that I shared on yesterday's show. Like, I, do I care to rush Jaden Aikens back so he could play on a potentially like fog and dew covered court on top of an aircraft carrier against Gonzaga and further screw up his foot? Like, I'm, I'm not thrilled at the prospect of that, but look, I, I'm also not a doctor. I'm just a carnival barker with a microphone. And if the doctors like where his foot's at, then what does my opinion matter on that? I just, oh, I just want this treated with kids' gloves. Uh, feet injuries are just. So fickle. I mean, aren't they? It's just, mm, mm, mm. so we'll, we'll see where that nets out. But yes, we are getting closer and closer to getting concrete timelines of where Jaden Akins stands right now. We will be back with some more football happenings here. But first, I just need to talk your ear off about LinkedIn. That's right. You guys already know this platform. You guys already know what we're talking about. It's LinkedIn for crying out loud. You've probably used it to either get a job or hire someone for the job. And as you know, when it comes to hiring people for your small business, it feels like every hire can be a high stakes wager, doesn't it? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's very easy. Hey, you just make your job posting, add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and Hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and best of all, for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions. That's right, Buster. They apply. And let's get into some football news here. Uh, of course, uh, the, the sun rose in the east uh, this morning, and that means, well, as sure as the the day is long, I, whatever, we got to talk about tunnels. That's what I'm trying to get to here. I'm just trying to mm. – Anyway, let's just, yeah, no, I'm just thrilled to talk about this some more. Uh, late on Tuesday afternoon, uh, Michigan State came out with a statement that they have suspended four more student athletes. That would be Malcolm Jones, Justin White, Brandon Wright, and Jacoby Winman. That brings a total of players suspended up to eight. And, um, I, I yeah, there you have it. Uh, look, I don't, don't want to, like, pat – anyone on the back too hard for doing due diligence because look, you put yourself kind of in this hole to begin with, but really like MSU is doing their due diligence here. They're, they are coming down hard on their players that were involved in the, in the, uh, the frenzy Saturday in the tunnel. Um, And look, everyone is clamoring for the hammer to be dropped on Uh, Michigan state, their players, uh, their coach, anyone that has ever worn green and white, there's clamoring for a hammer to be dropped on there. And, MSU is doing their part from a leadership perspective to make everyone, and not just everyone heavy, but also, you know, issue the suspensions that should, yeah, probably be given. Like, look, you, you think Michigan State is thrilled to suspend maybe its best player in Jacoby Winman. And look, I, I know that yeah, there was some super insanely grainy footage on Monday that showed Winman and his four pixels on the screen getting involved, and everyone's like, oh, of course Michigan State is suspending it. Again, like I'll say it for the third straight show, uh, investigations take time. Yes, we saw a little speck of a player up in the uh, corner of a video. It, it, it takes videos, more video, uh, more interviews, that is. like So, yeah, eventually when it all comes out, when the dust settles and Michigan State is doing what they have to do in suspending the players that were involved 
in this, uh, I don't know, skirmish, I guess is another fun word we'll use on Saturday. Uh, and look, I, not, not everyone is happy about this. Um, I, it's, it's hard to share an opinion. And this goes for anyone, anyone to share an opinion that anyone is going to agree with because there are 5,000 different opinions on what happened on Saturday. Uh, and it, look, it's um, it's very interesting because some MSU fans you know, have reached out and said that MSU is doing too much. It's not a lot of MSU fans, but there are some that are being like, why are they just accepting blame this quick and suspending everyone? And like, I, I disagree with you, but I'm not going to like you know, passionately argue against you uh some you know michigan fans and and oddly enough like media won't sleep until every single michigan state alum is placed behind bars in terry Haute. uh it's <sighs> look you you know how both schools are treated if you've been around this rivalry for five minutes it, it is a little different and if you don't think so you you are lying to yourself uh they're gonna go on a, a, a full court press <laughs> on msu um no doubt about that. Uh, it has been done. Meanwhile, uh, just right down the road, you can just hop on your Twitter, promote hate speech, and then we'll just yeah, have the media and their fan base at large just fully buy into it being a glitch without any other repercussions or blowback whatsoever. It's just it. Yeah. So we're going to put an atomic bomb in East Lansing and not fall asleep until every single cockroach on that campus is dead. But what's going on over there? No, they can't do any run over there ever. No matter how many incidents pop up, whatever. I'm tired of talking about it. So let's move on to uh, the same topic, actually. Uh, so there have been whispers that are now becoming chatters. That's a saying, I guess we'll just go with it. Um, that, hey, should this game like just take a break for a little bit? Should this Michigan State versus Michigan football game just take a pause for a hot second and Xavier Henderson speaking to the media early on Tuesday was asked about this and said, quote, all the fuss is for the external, the people not playing the game. Yeah. Uh oh, whoops. Sorry about that, Xavier. Uh, and goes on to say, shoot, the, the game might be, the game might be more stressful on the people watching than it is the players. Xavier, thank you for understanding us. It's, it's hard for us too, as fans. That's thanks for throwing us on there, Xavier. But look, I, Divisions are going to dissolve in two years here, in 2024. And I do wonder if this game does go away, if it will be a guaranteed game that gets played. Of course, I, I think it will. I do not think it goes away. But if they don't adopt the system where you have two protected rivalries or three protected rivalries, you know, like we've seen in the ACC, um, yeah, that would be weird. But no, I don't, I, I don't think pausing the rivalry – does any good i maybe you take a hard pause on night games i i imagine that's gonna happen how much of that aspect did it have to do with anything that happened on saturday i don't know but just optically i'm sure that they're gonna be like oh, let's um let's do noon or 3 30 here maybe that'll tamper emotions and adrenaline i don't know man it's it, it, it is interesting because i get it it is very heated we saw it boil over to the nth degree on saturday but now i because what's going to happen? You take a three-year break, a five-year break, and then you get back together to rekindle this rivalry. Like I, that That's going to be horrendously ugly. That's going to be like shaking a soda bottle for five years and then just uncorking it like that. I don't think that's going <laughs> to be beneficial to anyone in the long term. So, no, I don't think you take a break from this rivalry. But if you're one of the people that would just like a year off from this, <laughs> I'm not to argue you I, I can understand where you're coming from i just don't necessarily 100 percent agree with you um Xavier henderson also spoke about moving forward saying that we gotta stick together as a team and also getting in the locker room preaching to the young players uh and saying we got four games left that we can take advantage of and look i michigan state very lucky to have a guy like xavier henderson on their team this guy's a consummate leader just an all-time pro I mean, there's a, a reason that he's been captain about a thousand times in his career. So whether it's on the field, giving it all on a hurt leg, or just being really the the vocal guy for Michigan State right now in this odd time, I, you can't ask for a better guy right there. No doubt about that. And one more thing that was said in the press conference uh, that really stuck out that came from Peyton Thorne. 
And uh, they talked about the second, fourth, and one on Saturday night. This was at Michigan's five-yard line. They were down 10-7. to seven. This was the delayed handoff play. And Peyton Thorne lets out that he had an option for a quarterback sneak. Seems like a pretty good play call and said, quote, I didn't do that. That's on me. So I got to just briefly apologize, just only a little bit. I mean, I, let's not get carried away here. Only a little bit to Jay, Jay Johnson uh, because I, I kind of sort of somewhat ripped him a new one for that horrible play call. On fourth and one at the five-yard line, after the game, Mel Tucker said something on the lines of uh, it, it wasn't a play call mistake. It was an execution mistake or something like that. Basically a nice way of saying, no, we should have sneaked the ball. I don't know why we didn't do it. And then, well, here's Peyton the Thorn admitting that sneak was there. They didn't do the sneak. They instead ran the 49-second lose two yard on a handoff play. And, uh, uh, yeah, um, Peyton Thorne, by all accounts, great kid, works hard, more talented at football than albeit anything in my entire life. I have to say all this because uh, <laughs> it's not nice what I'm about to say next. I'm sort of getting kind of a little tired of hearing this over and over again, though, from our quarterback here that, oh, that's unacceptable or, oh, that's on me or, no, I need to be better. Like, I don't know how many of you are Lions fans, but this is almost starting to get similar for whenever Dan Campbell steps up to the podium and says, oh, I just need to do a better job. Oh, that one's on me. I need to grow up as a coach. Like, I how many times can we say this before we start getting concerned? This is just what it is now. Um, that seemed like a really obvious call to just sneak the ball, but I digress. We'll get into a few more Peyton Thorne quotes and kind of take a peek to this Saturday's game because, yeah, contrary to popular belief, there is a game going on this Saturday, and then we'll get to a listener question or two. We'll see where we're at with time. But first, I need to talk your ear off about betonline.net. Woo! It's MLB post season it is nba season nhl season football seasons in full swing and betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting uh, needs for football and the start of the new basketball season find all of the latest player developments team matchups news podcasts and in-depth analysis on every game at bet online and as always bet online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf, is at Bet Online. So, what are you waiting for? Head to the website today, use your mobile device, learn more about the trends and action that is at Bet Online where the game starts. So, Peyton Thorne was not done talking on Tuesday during the press conference. He was asked about Illinois because, yeah, that's that's Michigan State's next opponent. Whether anyone knows that or not, uh, there's just something on everywhere else that uh, I'm losing sight that there's an actual season that still has four games left. Um, Thorne called Illinois' defense, quote, outstanding. And also says, quote, we don't have time to think about anything other than them. That is a good idea. Because if you have not paid attention to Illinois football, first of all, uh, tune into tomorrow's show. We will be talking with the Champagne Room to get to know really the nitty-gritty about Illinois. But second of all, um, here's what you've been missing with Illinois football, specifically their defense. They've given up six touchdowns all season. Six touchdowns all season. There are some games. <laughs> I'm sure Ohio State scored six touchdowns total against Michigan State. Illinois, six touchdowns all season, giving up just 8.9 points per game. Clearly the best in the nation. They had the second best run defense in the nation at yards per game. The second best pass defense at yards per game. The best defense in the nation at opposing completion percentage at, get ready for this, 44%. Their defense is holding opposition to 44% completions. That is by far the best in the nation. And also the best in the nation with 15 interceptions, 15 interceptions. Michigan State in the last three years combined, 17 interceptions, just two more than Illinois already has in this season. Of course, Michigan State, just two interceptions on the year right now, but 
We're not here to talk about Michigan State's defense right now. We're here to talk about Illinois and, oh, yeah, that's right. I almost forgot to read this one off, too. The second most sacks in the Big Ten. Just, you know, something light right there. So, yes, Michigan State 10-point underdogs in this game in Champaign against the fighting Brett Bielema's. But, man, you got to score 10 points first uh, to even think of <laughs> uh, stunning Illinois on the road as double-digit underdogs. And that's not a sentence that feels good leaving my mouth, but that's just the fact of the matter of where both teams are this season. Again, we'll preview it more on tomorrow's show and then, of course, on Friday's show as we get into the weekend. But, yeah, that's your little Illinois – Ooh, scare me primer right there. I uh, hope I didn't spook you too much, but oh my God, the Illini are good. They're good at defense. And I get there in the Big Ten West and like it's just a, a JV division over there, but oh my God, six touchdowns a whole year. Oh, anyway, let's talk about Michigan State's defense here. Thanks to a listener question from Jeff. He also writes a bunch of uh, very nice um, things about the podcast and really do appreciate that because whoo, who have the comments. Uh, Wow, been a uh, been something. Sorry about that. Uh, is the uh, is that U of M performance the best you can have with the current scheme Hazelton runs? Would elite players make it significantly better, or is it just a seriously flawed scheme in need of a trash can? Gets me with a go green at the end too. Go white, Jeff. This has been a very popular topic of, of conversation all season long, no doubt about that, and. Look, coaches have alluded to it in press conferences as nicely as they could that there's a lot of mental errors being made by the players. We could also see it, too, that physically it's just not necessarily working. Although the last game against Michigan was probably the best iteration of what you could have in this scheme with the current personnel of, you know, hey, when they get to the red zone, stop them. Michigan State did that. But, man, what else really stuck out? in that Michigan game is with this scheme, how important it is to have linebackers that are really solid in pass coverage, because I, Oh, I wake up in the middle of the night hearing the echoes of the schoon as Schoonmaker makes his 80th catch for 400 yards. Like it's just, Oh, linebacker pass coverage. That's where you need the elite athletes right there. Look, these kids are trying their best. They they are trying their damnedest, their hardest. It ain't there, though. And that is where a lot of the flaws lie in with the linebackers in pass coverage. So, yeah, look, the the scheme can work. I mean, it works pretty well with Georgia, doesn't it? It's one problem. Michigan State does not have those Georgia athletes necessarily, and we've had this debate all throughout the season of, well, okay, doesn't that mean that you should kind of maybe change up your scheme? until you get those sort of players. I, it's a parlor game we can keep having and will keep having. Um, so long as Hazleton is still defensive coordinator at Michigan State, which could be for a few more weeks, a few more years. I really don't know because Mel Tucker still speaks highly of him. And But, hey, we all know that that's not the end. I'll be all of you staying in a job. But, man, it's interesting offseason coming up for Michigan State. No doubt about that. Also, we'll end this with – Listener question number two, locked on Spartans at gmail.com. If you ever want to reach out, by the way, should have shouted that out earlier, but here we are. Travis writes in, he, he wrote two questions. We'll get to his second one here. I know that the transfer portal isn't the fix all for the team's issues. Uh, you got that right, unfortunately. But which line do you need to look at filling from the portal? Uh, offensive line versus defensive line, which needs more help in the transfer portal? I'm going to go with offensive line here uh, because, look, we'll start with talking about the defense first. I, I like where the defensive line is at right now. You have Derek Harmon, okay, pretty good. Simeon Barrow, Jeff Petrowski can come back next year. Uh, Penn State transfer, Ken Talley, if you want to add him. He's a four-star from Pennsylvania. Uh, you got Jalen Hunt that can come back. Maverick Hansen, experienced guy that can come back. Zion Young, should he come back? Yes, he's one of those players in that suspension limbo right now. We'll see what happens with him. Alex Van Sumeren, no doubt about that. So I, you feel pretty good about where the defensive line is, I think. I, I think, again, like it's not a perfect unit by any means, but also the offensive line, after you lose Jarrett Horse, like I, we're talking about a team that hasn't had a run game all season. And um, like you could point to the running backs for some of the issues. You could also point to the offensive line for a good number of issues here. But man, this just 
it's hard to win football games. It's hard to establish an offense when the offensive line just looks the way it has. And that, that's where you need a lot of experience in the transfer portal. But just like Travis says, it, it's, it's not a perfect fix. It's not a Band-Aid. And I think we've learned that a lot this year about what the transfer portal really is and what it isn't. It, it is just a few Band-Aids. You know, it, it's not a full body cast that will completely fix everything like Kenneth Walker was last year. I think we're all having a hard reality of how much of a flash in the pan that was and how fortunate Michigan State was to get a talent like that because the majority of talent that you're getting from the transfer portal, it, it, it's fine, but it, it, it is not an overnight fix just like that. But yeah, God, the offensive line, I, in my opinion, could use any help we can get here moving forward. And uh, a lot of teams can say that because yeah, you, you win games, you lose games in the trenches and, Oh, my God. okay. No, oh, I liked it better when we were talking about basketball. With that said, stay tuned. Next two episodes, we're talking nonstop football here. Michigan State Spartans, Illinois fighting the line ice this Saturday. Again, we will be talking with SB Nation blog at the Champagne Room about their fighting the line eye on tomorrow's show. And then final thoughts Friday. I'll share all my final thoughts, all that good stuff, the five best bets with you on Friday night. But until then, you guys are the best. Love you all. Go Green.